What's up guys? This is DDP aka Derek Kirby and I am back after a little bit of a short hiatus here. I've been a little bit up and down as far as my health is concerned. Just seasonal stuff really. Allergies really bad in this and uh, I had a sinus infection. It's always fun. Just enough to kind of keep me away. On top of that, I've been insanely busy with school and work and everything going on. I've pretty much been run into the ground, which did not make things easier because, as you probably know, when you're under the weather and still having to grind and grind and grind and grind and grind, eventually you get ground into dust. You can't get better. You need time and rest. And so I finally have gotten through the worst of this stint, Things are still hectic, don't get me wrong, my schedule is always hectic, but I've gotten through the worst of it, and I'm feeling a lot better. The worst of the allergies has passed, I've actually gotten some decent rest the past couple of days, and I've gotten through, of the mountain of work on my plate, I've carved it down to eh, modest hills, we'll say. So I've got a little room to breathe, and as a result, I'm back here. Now, it's not always indicative of how crazy my schedule is versus me on any sort of hiatus. I don't even like to think of this as a hiatus because if I had it my way, I would be on here every single day talking with you guys, be it talking Mavericks, talking pop culture, whatever. I would do this shit every day, no questions asked. But I do have to juggle a few other things first. Perhaps we will get to that point with time, but it's going to take time and a lot of growth still on my part. I see that. I recognize that. But I'm not letting go of that goal. I am on pace to graduate from UNT in December. That will get me the degree that I've been chasing this whole time. Uh, the sports journalism certificate, I'm going to have that actually at the completion of this semester. So that's really a good thing as well. That should help me as well as I try to kind of break into sports media a little bit. And the big thing for me now is just to put together kind of resume and portfolio pieces. Because as much as I've grown in Dallas Prospect and as much as I manage things like video editing, audio editing, and live streaming, and podcasting, and writing, and all this other stuff that I do through Dallas Prospect, be it the channel, the site, social media presence, and branding, what have you, it's not, it's not everything. A lot of people will look for, what have you done for someone other than yourself? Because as far as they're concerned, unless I'm just completely blowing their minds with what I've done by myself, it's like what I've done by myself doesn't count or it's worth very little. That's frustrating because it's like, well, wait, wait, wait. The whole point is look what I did without any formal guidance or training. And imagine what I can do if you actually give me that access. If you actually give me those tools, what can I do? That's how I always view it. But that's not how a lot of employers will look at it. So... For me, that's probably going to mean some part-time gigs here and there, some different uh, freelancing opportunities, freelance journalists for hire. Hey, there you go. And uh, one of those bits I'm working on right now, actually, it's not even a sports one. It's just me trying to get something journalism-based in my background at this point. But I've actually stumbled onto a pretty interesting story here. Uh, something that really wasn't covered by local papers as far as I can see, but basically had a situation where a local coffee shop got run through by a dude who was high on, and I'm waiting on a toxicology uh, report to verify this, high on methamphetamine. That's an interesting thing. That's like four miles down the road from where I live. That's not far at all. I'm like, oh, okay then. Well, I'm curious. <laughs> so I am working on that. Like, obviously, the, the guy that did it got arrested. Uh, the case is still pending. 
Um, but I'm very interested to delve deeper into stories like that because it's like, huh, well, that doesn't happen very often around here, so it makes it more newsworthy. But there is a part of me as well that kind of likes that, even though I don't want to be an investigative journalist, I have crazy high respect for the people that do that sort of thing. And, and I'm not talking about pundits or anything like that. Again, you got to identify journalists versus just hacks that make everything about partisan politics and stuff. It's not what I'm looking for. I have high respect for actual investigative reporters and journalists, and I'm interested in the work, not as my own profession, but in certainly having it as a skill of mine that I can, you know, maybe do a little bit of here and there, just as I come across stories like that. If I go, huh, that's interesting. I'd like to delve deeper. I want to know how to go about that. And a lot of that's basics that I've already been learning, but I want to know how to take that next step. So that's what this is an opportunity for me to do, working on stories like this. I have actually created another channel as well, and there's several channels I'm associated with at this point that are under my Kirby Creative banner. But, of course, you have Dallas Prospect, which is the main pillar that's never changing. You have Cheap Pop, which is film, pop culture, a little bit of gaming. Game Drakes, that's like a Let's Play thing. That's actually not my channel. I'm just one of two content creators that work on it. It was actually my buddy that started that. And that's more so just a vehicle for me to do that kind of content as the itch arises. But it, it's not branding or anything that I oversee. But that's a place where you can find a bunch of my content as well. Uh, then... I have the Derek W. Kirby, which is kind of where any kind of vlogs or self-development, self-improvement stuff that I've been implementing for myself, and if I may be so bold, having great success with thus far. We're 50, I'm 54 days into like doing all these changes. Like I, I made a mental note and marked, I say mental note, I marked down on the calendar, the day in which I basically tried to take back kind of control of my life a little bit, my health, and not just physical, but mental health. And I've been tracking that, and here I am 54 days later, I'm more than 35 pounds down, and I feel physically and mentally in the best place I can remember in my life. Probably the best place I've been physically and mentally since like the start of my junior year of high school. Like, it's that long. I mean, I'm 31 years old now, so we're, we're talking about, like, flashing back to 17. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's been a minute. We're talking nearly half my life at that point. But Derek W. Kirby, that's where that content goes, and as well as the Kirby Create podcast where that, a lot of that stuff uploads. And then this channel, which goes, again, with the journalism stuff I was just talking about, is Local Journo. Journo is just short for journalist. Um, it's just kind of a slang term in the industry. I don't know how many people commonly use it, but I just like the idea of quick introduction to someone like, hi, nice to meet you, Derek Kirby, local journal. And that's how I've literally started, uh, different conversations I've had with these, whether it's local businesses or whatever, it's just a quick way to get out there and like, not have to say like, I'm an independent journalist or I'm a journalism student. Like, I don't like saying that because it, it I mean, independent journalists, that's, that's a respectable thing, sure. But I want to sound more like I have those kind of qualifications and the skill set already built. Because a lot of people will just say like, oh, well, I'm doing journalism. And while average regular people can do journalism, they often lack the refinement for it and the ethical... Um, compass I guess you would say as far as what the ethics of journalism are and so I don't want to lump myself in with that group necessarily and I don't want to say I'm a student journalist because then they're not going to want to tell me as much or they're going to they'll either disregard me altogether or they will just give me kind of half-assed blow-off answers and I don't want that either so I just basically leave it as saying local journal and if they ask who I'm with you know then we can get into that 
Uh, a lot of times I'll cite other projects of mine that I either started and put on the back burner or something like that, like a Dentonite perspective. Um, here in Denton, Texas, that was something that I wanted to do. I've cited that before. Uh, I've cited, when I was still with the Denton Record Chronicle, I cited that even though I was basically in the closing days of that internship and I knew the work I was doing wasn't going to go there. I still was like, hey, I am affiliated with the Denton Record Chronicle. It's not saying that what we're talking about is going to publish there, but you know that was kind of my bridge in that situation. And so finding little ways like that to uh you know to kind of get access and to build out that portfolio a little bit it keeps me busy it keeps me damn busy but you know what i enjoy it i do i enjoy this kind of sense of i don't know if creative freedom is the right word i enjoy feeling like i'm the one steering the ship again because for so long in my day job it's just been like well i do this because this is what i do this is what i've done we're talking 10 years that i've done this i don't know what else i don't have i didn't have a professional career outside of web development and so that's what i did but i've never loved web development it was just a skill that i developed and refined over time and man you talk about like vampires in your life whether it be people who drain you or jobs or whatever my career has become a vampire for me it leaves me absolutely drained of all energy and motivation and it was actually in sort of that drained sense of despair that I first came across the idea for the Dallas prospect that I was like, you know what? I got to find something that reinvigorates me again. And for me, sports, creativity, uh, being a content creator in general, opened that door. And now I'm kind of taking that into the, the next steps, if you will, looking at different things I can still do. Different things like content-wise, whether, like I said, gaming, pop culture, investigative journalism through a local journal, whatever. Just different things that I can do and that I can put out there. And I like feeling like I have that sense of control again. And I like working in such a diverse field now where it's like no two days are the same. It's like, hey, this day I'll do a bunch of work on this front. And I might even work on that a little bit the next day, but I'm also going to be over here doing this stuff. And so nothing ever feels like it gets stagnated for me. And I appreciate that. I really appreciate that sense of things always feeling fresh and interesting. And now I'm just trying to figure out how I can, you know, it's like a Rubik's Cube. I'm trying to figure out how to set it up and get all that where it can be this sort of thing where uh, through these different streams, these different uh, fields and platforms, I can kind of create a comprehensive, um, basically career for myself. You know, if I could be totally independent, I would, if I didn't have to worry about a day job, if I could just say, Hey, take Dallas prospect and all these other things I do take my freelance journalism and writing and stuff like that. I do. And I'll just operate all on my own time. Everything's going to be me and what I'm doing. I will steer this ship and I will answer. You know, obviously, if you're freelance journalism, you're answering to uh, your, your clients in that regard, like the companies that you're writing for and things like that. I'm not saying, like, I answer to no one. But, like, for the most part, I'm the one in control of everything. I'm the one who says, like, I will work with you or I won't work with you. Like, I want to have that level of agency again. You thought I was going to say control yet again. But see, I've made a mental catalog, and I realized I've already said it like four times, and so I had to find a substitute word that was even more powerful. And I, I feel like we've done that here today. So, yeah. But, yeah. Uh, I, and I know if you're, if you're here, you want to hear what my thoughts are on the Mavericks. Like I said, 
the other day when I wrote on the, the community tab, I, I'm here, I'm paying attention, I'm watching. I just haven't been on. Basically, I'm going to do a separate video on that. I'm going to talk about uh, kind of the team and its current trajectory. Obviously, that was a disappointing loss last night. DeRozan, you got to go get that dude in the summer. I, I don't want to hear about Oladipo's or, you know, any other big name that people want to throw out there. You go get DeRozan. He's exactly what the Mavericks say that they are, quote, salivating to pair with Luka. He's a perfect fit next to Luka, and he is absolutely deadly in exactly the situation in which he killed us last night. And I kind of wonder why we didn't double team him knowing that. Seems like we pretty much dared him to make that shot, but whatever. Again, we'll get into that in a different video. But for now, I'm just going to wrap this up with this. Thank you guys for being patient. I, I promise I'm working every day. I'm getting better every day. And uh, it's only a matter of time before you guys start to see the many fruits of my labor. I could have thought of a better closing line than that, but apparently I did not. Now we're just here kind of awkwardly waiting for OBS to register that I clicked in stream. Still going, huh? Still going. I mean, well, as long as it's going to go like this, I might as well say, and remember, every legend...